I'm here in Hong Kong uh, for the uh, CoinGeek conference that was a couple of days ago. And it's been a really good conference. Um, but I, I don't want to talk about the conference right now. I want to talk about an idea that, that occurred to me a couple weeks ago about basically why it's unusual uh, for, for people to think uh, that running a full node is a good idea for most people. So there's a recent tweet from Jameson Lop, which I'll, I'll find, um, which sort of conveys this attitude that that you know it's in normal people's interest to run a full node because you're you're doing some type of service for yourself that you're defending your own transactions. So I want to try and explain why I think this is odd because um, the the problem isn't that you're validating every transaction. The problem is that you want to keep the size of blocks small so that you can validate every transaction on the network. And the reason why this is weird is because, well, what are people using to transact in the world today? Uh, on Bitcoin, we know, let's say, let's say there's a maximum of, of about six transactions per second, which is roughly true if every transaction is SegWit. Um, well, the number of transactions in the world is an awful lot higher than six transactions per second. So people use all sorts of other payment systems, you know, ACH and Swift and, and stuff like that and PayPal and credit cards and the total number of transactions per second. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sure it's many orders of magnitude larger than six transactions per second, though. So on Bitcoin, you do have like the technical ability to validate every transaction on the network. And that's a really interesting property. And that's never going to go away. That's part of the intrinsic property of Bitcoin is that it's permissionless. If you want to validate every transaction on the network, you can. But that doesn't mean that doing so is free. So the, the weird part about the idea is that there's something good about leaving the maximum block size limit in place so that the cost of running a full node is, is less expensive. And so therefore, more people can run full nodes. The error is because that also prohibits people from actually using the network. So if you're validating six transactions per second today, you're saying if more people used Bitcoin, I would then have to validate 12 transactions per second per day, and that would increase the cost of running a full node. Well, that's true, but why do you suddenly need to validate 12 transactions, uh, you know, 12 transactions per second or whatever I said, so it's 12 transactions per second. You could still validate six transactions per second even with bigger blocks. You're just not validating every transaction. But you're not validating every transaction anyway. So what, what difference does it make? You're still holding the miners accountable for the transactions that actually matter to you. So let me describe an algorithm for, for basically, if you're someone who doesn't trust the miners and you want to validate as many transactions as is economically rational for you, what you should do is, first of all, you can validate your own transactions. And the way to do that is you find your transactions on the blockchain, which you don't need a full node to be able to do. You then query all of the input transactions, uh, and then you you run the the uh, you know you, you you validate the transaction. You run all the scripts and all that stuff, and you make sure that you know the the uh, you know the outputs are not greater the inputs and, and whatever else is in the uh, check check transaction function, and you validate your own transactions. So you can validate your own. You can also validate a bunch of other transactions if you want to. You can validate everything coming in and everything going out of your transactions. You can identify your friend's Bitcoin addresses if you want to and validate all of their transactions. And maybe you can pick some at random and just validate those. And you can, you can track it all the way back to the Coinbase transaction uh, in every case if you want to. Uh, you're probably not normally going to want to, but you can. And so you can see that the miners are following the rules for all the transactions that you actually care about and more because you're probably not actually processing yourself six transactions per second. So you can, you can validate six transactions per second now. And if blocks increase in size by many orders of magnitude, you can still validate six transactions per second. By unthrottling the maximum block size, you're allowing more people to access the blockchain and you aren't losing anything. So the error in the logic is that just because more people are using the network that somehow it's on you that this is necessary or good for you to start validating even more transactions than you already are. But there's simply no point in doing that. What do you care about these other people's transactions? I don't think you care about them right now and you're not validate them and you can't anyway. Uh, you know, so what do you, what, you know, what, 
why does it matter to you? Uh, you know, you know whether wh how expensive it is for you to validate a bunch of transactions that have nothing to do with you. Um, so anyway, so so that's that's one of the errors I see in in uh, in, the, in the logic that there's something good about leaving the maximum block size limit in place. On Bitcoin Cash, of course, we 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 just went through hard fork. Actually, we raised the maximum block size to 32 megabytes, which is way 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 bigger than Bitcoin. Uh, and we can process. I'm not sure what the number is, but it's it's you know uh, uh, more than an order of magnitude more than Bitcoin. So it's it's probably I'd have to run the numbers again real quick. But if it's six on Bitcoin, it's probably roughly 60 on Bitcoin Cash per second. Um, but you don't have to validate all 60 per second uh, if you don't want to. Like <laughs> you know that that's you know you can still validate your transactions and, and so on all the transactions around uh, your transactions for the same cost as before. And I want to say, uh, so there are two problems with my argument that I'm giving right now. The first problem is no one has actually written the software that allows you to do this. Like, what, can you just plug in, I want to validate my transactions and everything around them up to six transactions per second. No one has written that software. It is possible to write that. I don't think there's much demand for that, which is why no one's written it. Um, but anyway, the, but it is true that no one has yet written that software. But it's also true that you could. Um, I want to say there's one other technical point that makes it more challenging to validate a small fraction of the transactions on the network than, uh, than really should be. Uh, it would be preferable to have UTXO commitments. I'm not sure what the status of this in the Bitcoin Cash world is, um, but just like you can use these Merkle trees to identify transactions in the blockchain, it would be great if you knew what the current UTXO set was so that when you look at new transactions, you don't have to download the entire input transactions. You can just query the UTXOs directly. And that, because the thing is, if you're not validating the entire blockchain, you don't have the blockchain available to you to easily query the input transactions to validate a transaction. So you have to query them across the network. And you don't actually need the entire input transaction. You really just need the UTXOs uh, to validate a transaction. So with a UTXO you know, commitment, uh, you can there's there's less to query publicly in order to be able to validate a given transaction. So there are two things here. One would be like somebody just needs to write the software to let you do this, and then secondly, there is like a, a, a protocol change that's desirable to improve the efficiency of doing this. But in any case, the the point is still holds. You can do this right now on Bitcoin Cash today or Bitcoin. You pick however many transactions per second you want to validate. And you can validate that number of transactions per second without processing the entire blockchain. Okay, and so if you are currently processing six transactions per second, you can keep processing six transactions per second forever, even with a radically larger block size increase. So anyway, so that's one of the errors uh, in in uh, you know this idea of everybody running a full node. So I'll talk about more stuff later. This is actually the first of probably at least two videos I'm going to do today because I, I haven't made a video in a while and. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here at this conference. So so thank you for watching, and I'll keep making these videos on a regular basis. Also, I suppose I'll link to a tweet I made today about um, why I think it's important for people in the industry to, to do this, to create more content, uh, because there's a lot of, you know, especially in Bitcoin Cash, the, the information sources are, are just not very good. So when beginners come into the industry, um, we need to just have high-quality information available to them so that they can actually figure stuff out. Uh, so I, I encourage other people in the industry to uh, you know, make your own videos or write articles or whatnot and be aware that when beginners come into the industry right now, they're getting terrible information uh, about what's going on. And so creating high quality information for people so that they can figure stuff out is, is a good idea. So anyway, so thank you for watching.